Hallelujah. Go ahead, lift your hands to heaven and get a drink. Hallelujah, nothing worse than a straight Christian. We all need to be drunk in the spirit. You know, people in the world go to bars to get drunk to solve their problems. Other problems don't go away. But you and I need to be drunk in the spirit so we can hear correctly, see correctly. So for me and you to be drunk in the spirit, we're going to have more clarity. We're going to be more sensitive to the things of God. <laughs> How many of y'all know God's on the move? So you got to move with him, right? Amen. We're moving. We're grooving. Things are happening. Might not understand it all, but it's happening. <laughs> Praise be to God. You know, when we gathered together last time, we talked about kingdom costs and about the price. And we talked about the area that the kingdom cost and the prices that we need to be beheaded. You know, like John the Baptist was beheaded, and many martyrs were beheaded. But physical beheading profits nothing because it's, it's a work of the flesh. But spiritual beheading is to sever the authority of the carnal mind. It is to sever the authority of the carnal mind over the choices of the body, soul, and spirit of a man and come under submission to the mind of Christ. You know, the world has nothing to offer, but it promotes carnality. That's why the Lord says, come out from among them. Again, we need to be head ourselves. That is a price that you and I must pay. And beheading ourselves again, it re it's, it's saying remove, severing the carnal mind of its authority so that the mind of Christ can take dominion. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, would you go there with me, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 9. I think we've heard this quite a few times. But let's read it together. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. Everybody there? Let's read it together. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Who what? Who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? His spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except for the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The carnal man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are what? Foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things. Say judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he might instruct him. But we have the what? The mind of Christ. So in Christ with the mind of Christ, which is the mind of the spirit. It's associated with the anointing. Now, please understand that God's not given us the spirit of the world again. But we have the spirit of Christ. And in the spirit of Christ, we have the mind of Christ. So if we have the mind of Christ, we have truth. We have truth. And in this, we've got to come to an understanding that in Christ, with the mind of Christ, you know, so many times people say to you, you're judging me. You're right. I'm judging your fruit. We don't bring condemnation on an individual or condemn them. But the Bible says, test the spirits. Know who you're associated with. And, and in this, 
we look at the area of fruit. Fruit. And in this area of fruit is what we judge something by. So one of the things that we're always looking at, well, fruit is connected to something. So what we're looking at is whether that person is walking in truth or deception. So that person is either trusting or not trusting. And in this, there are false trusts and there are true trusts in the things that we trust in. Let's go a little bit further and go to John 16. So who's going to bring all of this to us? The Holy Spirit. And John 16. Now the word says that all things can work to the good to those who love the Lord and called according to his purpose. So God brings us through all kinds of things. And it's for training. It's for reigning. It's for chastening. It's for exposing. But the bottom line is that he's always revealing truth to us. Because there's only... One truth. And John 16, in verse 7, what did Jesus say? Nevertheless, I tell you the what? The truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But I, if I depart, I will send him to you. Who will send him? Okay, Jesus. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me or follow me of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the ruler of this world was judged I still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now however when he the spirit of what truth has come he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come, because he is truth. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said that he will take of mine in what? Declare it to you. So the spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. He was sent by Jesus, authorized by the Father. So there's something very important here, and it's the area where we're looking at source. Source. So the Holy Spirit is truth. Amen. He was sent by Jesus, authorized by the Father. So the Holy Spirit of truth is, he has a source, doesn't he? He is a source, but because he's a one with the main source, isn't he? But again, if you step back for a second and he says, Jesus said, I will send him. And everything that we do, we should always look through to see what the source is. What's the source? What's the source of your trust? And what's the source of your false trust? What's the source of what you're doing? What's the source? See, we've got to begin to look all the way through because right now deception is great. The word even tells us things will get worse on the earth. So the world is getting more deceived and it's our responsibility to keep deception out of the kingdom by exposing darkness. Now, go to John 15 while we're here. In verse 26, what does Jesus say? But when the helper comes, whom I shall send you from where? The Father, who is the what? He's the source. The Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the the beginning again the source the father to the son who paid the price the holy spirit who is the spirit of truth he's the distributor of truth and he's the manifester of truth because there is one truth 
there is only one truth or the true source. Amen? Now, we know that there are types of truth. In other words, in associated with this one truth, we have eternal truth, which is timeless. We have created truth. And in this created truth, it's what's created for now, for me and you. There is created truth. In other words, you and I can be co-creators with God. It brings forth things. Creative truth brings what? It brings forth things. So there's an eternal truth which is timeless, and there's creative truth. Now, does it all come from the same source? Yes. And because creative truth manifests, it manifests. When a miracle happens, it's a creative miracle because truth is manifesting in itself. Then there is temporary truth, and in this temporary truth is an area where truth that sustains for a period of time, but it's all one source and one truth. You know, wonderful way to express to somebody in a certain area, especially when you're involved with so much multiple belief systems out in the world. One of the things I, I'll ask somebody, so what is truth? And you know what they'll begin to tell me? Well, uh, this is truth, and this is truth, and that's truth, and no, no. What is truth? Because see, for me and you, truth is not just knowledge. Truth is a person, because he's the source. He is the person. So there are many religions that have certain truths. They're religious. They have a truth. Well, this is a truth. This is a ritual. Well, this is a truth. But for me and you, our truth is not just knowledge. It is a person. Has everybody got it? Truth is a person because our truth is from a source. See, he's the source. Everything else is a resource. So when we begin to keep everything in an area and we are sensitive enough to begin to see things through, always look into the source. You'll know what your motive is. You'll know decisions you're getting ready to make. Everything is associated with the source. Is everybody with me? Anybody with me? Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go to John 14. <laughs> In verse 15. Would you read it with me? If you love me, keep my what? Commandments. Now, these co the word here, commandments, is associated with required guidelines. Okay? They are required guidelines that God gives us. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you i will not leave you orphans i will what i will come to you i will what i will come to you in other words if you love me you will keep my required guidelines. He says, I'm going to send you a helper. He's called truth. But he calls him a him. <laughs> he is the spirit of God. He is anointed. Go to verse 6. What does Jesus say? He said to him, I am the what? The way, the truth, and the life. Again, what is truth? It's not what is truth. It's who is truth. Jesus is the person, the Christ, the anointed one. And the anointing, there is the eternal presence, eternal power, and eternal truth is in the anointing. That's why the anointing put on flesh. Because remember, who impregnated Mary? The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of what? Truth. And Jesus came in the fullness of truth and grace. So understand, we are looking now at source, 
at what? Source. So he is the source of all eternal truth. Knowledge is the word spoken by the source of all truth. And if the source is Jesus Christ, who he is, Christ Jesus, it's not just truth, is it? It's associated with a source who is a what? Person. He is God Almighty. See, the word says that when Jesus said, man can't live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So what's he saying? He's saying, man, you know, you can't live according to the ways of the world. You can't live according to what the world tells you. You won't survive because it's temporary. You must have your source. The world has their source, and we have our source. And they are two different sources. Our source is the only truth. And when he speaks, he speaks creative. He speaks exposure. He speaks life. What he speaks is true. And his words do not come back void. So you and I are to eat this truth. What you speak is what you eat. When you declare things, when you are speaking the word, it is light. And what you speak is what you eat. And the more you eat of truth, the more light you have, more exposure is within you, and the more Christ-like you become. That's why Jesus said, he eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood or of my spirit will have eternal life. Go to Ezekiel 2. Ezekiel 2. Hallelujah. So for you and I to maintain life, our source must be the life giver. And it's associated with truth. In Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1, and he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. And the Spirit entered in me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. For they are impudent and stubborn children. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. As for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are rebellious house, yet they will know that I have sent a prophet among them. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them, nor fear them, of their words. Though briars and thorns are with you and you dwell among scorpions, do not be afraid of their words or dismayed by their looks, though they are a rebellious nation. You shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you, and do not be rebellious like the rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. What's he saying? Eat what I give you. Eat what I tell you. Now when I looked, there was a hand stretched out to me, and behold, a scroll of a book was in it. Then he spread it before me, and there was writing on the inside and on the outside, and written on it were lamentations and mourning and woe. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat the scroll. And he said to me, Son of man, feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll that I give you. So I ate, and it was in my mouth like honey in sweetness. Again, this is the area where the truth, who the source was, he said, eat my truth. And then he said, 
Now go speak it. Now go speak it. But there's something important. He was associated with who? The source. He maintained relationship. He maintained fellowship. He heard the voice of God. He knew his unction in his presence because God was his source. Is everybody okay? In 1 John chapter 2. So did God give him truth? Amen. Did he expose rebellious? Amen. See, because if it's not truth, it's a lie. Even though certain things have a sense of truth, but if it's not the truth, it's a lie because its source is from somewhere else. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18. Little children, let's read it together. It is the what? Last hour and you have heard the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the what? It's the last hour. Are we in the last hours? Amen. It says they went out from us. Now why would they go out from us? Because who is their source? It's not truth. Does everybody understand that? Now, he's not talking about, he's talking about people go back to the world. You understand that? They went out from us and back into the world. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be what? Made manifest and that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing from who? The Holy One and you know what? You know all things. Why do you know all things? Because your source is the truth. The person. It's not just because you read the Bible. It's because you're associated with the person. Because there's many people that read the Bible and don't even understand it. They just read it. And they look at it as another book. But when you're maintaining it, and it says that the anointing, the anointing, so, you know, if you're hanging around in God's presence, you know what happens? The anointing begins to rub on you. If you're hanging around with God, are you going to know truth? Amen. Is the enemy going to try to deceive you? Of course he will. But you will know. Does everybody get this? I'm telling you that there's much deception going on, and we must be very careful now. It says they went out because... They put their trust in the wrong source. They put their what? Trust in the wrong source. False trust leads to false hope. False hope. False perception. False vision. And anything that is not God's timing, purpose, or leading is a false trust. So everybody got it. Again, I want to say this again. Where there is false trust, it always leads to a false hope, a false perception, and a false vision. And anything that is not of God's timing, purpose, or leading is a false trust. Is everybody okay? And this is what the enemy is bringing up right now. He's manipulating in so many ways. In other words, we must always look at what is the source of your trust? What is the source of my trust? False trust will also have a false witness. We are always looking to what the source is. What's my source? So you're able to see it all the way through. What's the source? Is there a false trust? Or am I trusting in the truth? Am I trusting? What's my source of trust? Go to John 8. John chapter 8. John 8, 42.
That's why the Bible says in a multitude of counsel, there's safety and wisdom. John 8, 42. Is everybody there? Let's read this together, please. And Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own what? Resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me or you do not follow me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Why? Because they're what? Truth. Because the source is the person who is truth. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. He says again, if God was your source, in other words, so was there a false trust there? Amen. What were they trusting in? Their own abilities, their own talents, their own strengths. God was your source, which, you know, then he said you'd believe in me. But they had a false trust. Their source was the devil. In other words, where there is a false trust, the source is always demonic. There's some influence there that is deceptive. And anything that's associated with deception is demonic. Because God doesn't deceive us. So the devil was the father of lies. And in this, it's very we must be very careful because so many times people get involved in a false trust. And sometimes they fall in a false trust is because they, in this you can tell a fruit of that they're not following anymore. They're doing their own thing. And the word says, seek ye the kingdom of God and all things will be added. They are anxious for everything because their trust is in them and not the right source. What begins to happen is they don't get counseled. They, they lose the true trust. They lose truth. They lose fellowship. And they lose fellowship with the source of truth. So now there's false trust. Don't raise your hands. We've all fallen into it at some time. But thank be to God, because if you have a desire to please him and love him, you shake it off and you go to the next thing. The whole thing is, is that we learn from it. And while we're going through it, we know that all things are going to work to the good because we're going through it. But the world is under false trust. You know, how many times have we made mistakes because we trusted in the job, in a person? In our finances. Somebody promised you something and you trusted it. People put their trust in drugs and alcohol. That's all false trust. Those trusts are of the world. The source of those false trusts is of the world and who's the rule of the earth? Anybody? Satan. God owns it. Satan rules it right now. But not for long. Go to Jeremiah 17. False trust. Who's your source? Jeremiah 17. In verse 5, Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Let's read it together. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who what? Trusts in man. Hello. And makes flesh his strength, 
whose heart departs from the Lord. Why? Because the source is not God. The source is not Christ. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes. In other words, when God is trying to bring something to him. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and the salt land which is not inhabited. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when what? He comes. Why? Because who's his source? Truth. God Almighty. See, who your source is will determine what you trust in. You think God ever tests us on these things? You betcha. He wants to know who you trust in. Hmm. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when he comes. But its leaves will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is a deceitful thing above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind. Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of of his doings. Proverbs 8. Blessed or cursed. So if you have false hope or you have false trust, that means your source is false. So he says, blessed is the man who trusts in God and cursed is the man who trusts in man. In Proverbs 8 and verse 32. Let's read it. Now, therefore, listen to me, my children. For blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. Whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. So can false trust lead to death? Yes. Because the source of it is death. So everybody got it. Because the source of it is what? Death. Doesn't the enemy promote death? Is everybody okay? So false trust can lead to death. Anybody trusted in false stuff and it led to your near death? Hello. Well, that's what the enemy loves to portray. He loves to put little partial truths. It's like a cracker or something that the outside looks good and tasty, but there's a message inside that's wrong. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> People go to these Chinese places and read all these fortune cookies. You know, if you're a believer, you should never read those things. Why? Because you open the door to the enemy. You already have a source. You don't need no Chinese cookie. You don't need no cookie, man, to tell you what to do. 1 Corinthians 3. You know, there are many people in the world that look for their horoscope every day in the newspaper. They need to know what the sign is saying. If they knew the source, that false trust, hello? And we know that the devil contaminates everything. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Yes. I read it this morning and it told me what to do. Did it tell you to repent and try again? 
1 Corinthians chapter 3. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be what? Wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is what? Foolishness with God, for it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Paulus or Cephas or the, or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. Say, all is mine, because my source is Christ. Everything else is a resource. And he says, and you are Christ, and Christ is God's. So the wisdom of this world is called false trust. The wisdom of this world is what? False trust. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3 and verse 5. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? What's your source? So when somebody starts throwing all kinds of stuff at you, you can say, what's the truth? They're going to try to look up something in the dictionary. They're going to try to tell you that this knowledge is truth. No, you're not looking for what is truth. Who is your source of this so-called truth that you say? Well, it's a Chinese cookie. No. Confucius say, you know, Confusion says, <laughs> Proverbs 3, and verse 5. What's it say? Read it. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all of your increase so your barns will be filled with plenty. And your vats will overflow with new wine. In other words, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean on your own carnal common sense. Because carnality is a false trust. Carnality is a false trust. You can't trust you. In fact, you can be your worst enemy. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Hallelujah. Simple teaching to extend what we've been talking about and complete it in the area of kingdom cost. Because there is a cost, and that's to be ahead yourself. But the enemy wants to keep your carnal head activated so that you react instead of respond in first timothy chapter six is everybody there in verse three if anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to what wholesome words even the words of our lord jesus christ to the doctrine which accords with godliness he is proud knowing nothing but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reveling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such, withdraw yourself. In other words, don't hang around with them. You know individuals 
that are using God for gain. They're using God for gain. And you know it because you can tell by their fruit. They proclaim to know God, but God is really not their source. In verse 6, now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and is certain we aren't carrying anything out of here. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drawn men into destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. In other words, we shouldn't love money. It's not our root. In other words, money shouldn't control us. We should have control over money. Money should serve us. We don't serve money. There's a difference. And I believe that's what God is bringing up right now in that area because there's been false trust and the exposure of the enemy is becoming more and more lucrative for the benefit of the kingdom. Everyone desires to have money, but when you're willing to give up your position in the kingdom for money, something's wrong. Because everyone should have a desire to be promoted somehow in the kingdom of God. See, too many times when there becomes a false trust that prevents individuals from being promoted into the kingdom. Because they're not about kingdom business. They're about self business. And everything right now is kingdom business. God is exposing the garbage that's not associated with kingdom business. Kingdom business. There's a kingdom cost. And we're to be about kingdom business and not our own. So there should be a desire to want to be a fulfill some part in the body of Christ. If your desire is just to go out and get a job and build your own stuff and buy this and buy that, then you're an idiot. Plain and simple. And you don't have vision and you don't have purpose. Everything is self. And if it's self, it's a false trust. Has everybody got this? Because this is what's exploding tremendously. You know, one of the things that's happening right now, we're having an economic problem, aren't we? The world is in an economic problem. But God is raising up Joseph Ministries. It's a time of Joseph's time. Because there's going to be a, a time of plenty before there's going to be a time of lack. And in that time of lack, will be a short span but in that time of lack is going to be an enormous harvest because people are going to wonder why you got it and they don't. But there's a place where we must keep our priorities. And in this place of priorities, he must be your source. That means you go to the kingdom every morning. That means you go to prayer every morning. You don't go feed your flesh. You go feed your spirit. See, God wants to see words are not sufficient enough. Words are not sufficient. Oh, Lord, I love you. Good, show me. You know, when I asked the Lord to free me, I said, I'll do whatever it takes. He said, God, do you want to get off of drugs or alcohol? Or do you want a new life? I said, I wanted a new life. And he said, show me. So I did whatever I had to do. And then he visited me. And he freed me. I didn't know about priorities I didn't know about keeping God first but I got to a point where everything else diminished around me to where my only source was him and I'm here today because he's still my source 
No, everything can sink around me, but he's still my source. I can still lose everything. See, when, when he is your source, you can lose everything. You can lose your family. You can lose your home. You can lose your job. You can lose everything. But he's your source. And you're not going to say, oh, Lord, why'd you take it? Look what happened to Job. Now, God used Job to kick devil's butt. Because the devil was waiting for Job to curse God, and Job wasn't going to do it. Even his own wife said, man, why don't you just curse God and die? He said, uh-uh. Look at what he's given me. If he can give it to me, he can take it from me. But it's still, he's my source. So we are in a time right now that God must be your source. Christ in the anointing, he is your source no matter what's going on. It doesn't matter. You may have something one day and lose it the next. But we can't allow false trust to come into us. We can't allow that. The Bible says make no place for the devil. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust him all the way. No matter what's going on, trust him. Trust him. Complete trust where he is your complete source. And I want to close it, Proverbs 1. So where there is false trust, there is false hope, there is false perception, false vision, and false witness. Proverbs 1. Oh, hallelujah. Slap your neighbor and tell him this is for you. <laughs> Slap your other neighbor and tell him this is for me. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 24. Let's read it. Because I have what? Called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded because you disdain all my counsel and would have none of my rebuke i also will laugh at your calamity who i will laugh at your what calamity and i will mock when your terror comes when your terror comes like a storm and your destruction comes like a whirlwind when distress and anguish come upon you then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to the full with their own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil because he is their source. Everything else is a resource. So in everything that you are doing, Make sure that you see it all the way through of who is my source. Who is my source? You are keeping priorities because there's too much false trust. And the enemy loves to come up with false trust around us. When we begin to trust in man's abilities and stuff, you cannot. You can't trust with words of a man. You must trust in words from your God, Christ Jesus. And what he says stands and everything else sinks. So whatever you're going through, and everybody's going through it, but the beauty is that we're going to go through it if he is your source. Other than that, you get stuck in it. False trust. Whatever you're trusting in. Whatever you're believing, whatever you're following, make sure you know the source. Amen?
Let's lift our hands to heaven. Father, we give you all our glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word tonight. We are honored and blessed that you have released your word of truth through your anointing that we may be sensitive with clarity, discerning with wisdom, and become into the place where we are trusted by you. Trusted by you. So, Lord, whatever it is, if we've had false trusts, we ask that you expose them and remove them. And let your truth and your power have dominion in every area of our life that we will follow as good stewards, as servants, and as sons and daughters that please you. Now, Lord, I bless each and every one here today. I ask that you'll protect the seed that's been imparted in them, covering that seed with the blood, and watering it with the anointing, that it may grow and bear fruit for your glory. Grant your people boldness, and may your name be glorified in everything we do. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.